Hi guys, this is Nadia from Ibali Crafts and today I want to show you how to create this weaveless wire wrap pendant with a pair focal. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. I quite often make kits and PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on here and I'll pop a link in the description below. Um, I also have all sorts of gemstones, square and half round wire, some beads and all sorts of other goodies on my website. So take a gander over and see if there's anything you fancy. Last but not least, come and join us in our uh, wire wrappers and metal smiths group on Facebook. I'll also pop a link below. Right, let's get started. Right, we're going to start. This is a 30 centimeter about 11 inches piece of wire and we're going to find the midpoint like this and we're just going to fold it in half like so I've used thicker wire for this because I quite like the width I get with hammering so I purposefully went a thicker wire so we're going to give it a little bit of a bend at the tip just gently not to damage the wires and i'm just going to bring it back in like so just decide on the shape that you want. I decided for this one, I actually quite like to make a wide kind of design. So just kind of adjust it like that. So obviously make this nice and neat. So just um, when you're working with this, make it as symmetrical as you can on each side. And then we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so once you're happy with the shape, we're going to create a section of the veil. So I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers and I'm going to grab the wire. You could actually mark this as well with some marker pen if you have. I just tend to grab and then I put a bend in it like that. And I'm going to flip this over and do the same on the other side. So I'll just try and leave enough of a space so that these two wires line up it doesn't always do that it looks a bit wonky like that you can always adjust it by squeezing it closed again and then moving a little bit further up and do the bend so now obviously with a thicker wire this is a little bit more difficult and then because it's obviously harder to manipulate and then obviously you adjust it until these things are parallel like that Right, so make the frame just big enough so that there's a nice gap in between the stone and the frame. So obviously this, you know, depends on how big you want the pendant to be. Um, so just make it a size that you're happy with. So that's what it looks like so far. And now we're going to create the bale using some half round wire. So I've got some 0 0.8, which is 20 gauge half round, and I'm just anchoring it on one side. And I'm just going to wrap the other side around the two wires that are going to be our bail. So you can either flip it or wrap the wire around it like I do, or you can rotate the actual piece yourself so how you do it that's entirely up to you like that and just try and make sure that it's nice and tight and every now and then just push the weaves together we're just going to carry on until we get to the top all right so i created the bale finished up the wire so you can leave a little tail and the next step is we're going to do the shaping and the hammering so i'm going to bring in a steel block and i tend to hammer the sides it helps to have these tied together because that will stop 
um, the wires on, on each side from actually deforming um, and the way I hammer these is I don't hit too hard when I hit I move the hammer in the direction that I want the wire to expand to, if that makes sense. So if I want the wire to flatten out towards the right, I direct the hammer blows to the right. And as I said, I don't hit the wire too hard. I try and be very gentle. It will grow. It'll take a little bit longer, but that way you prevent things from becoming dented and distorted so just take your time with that and um, I switch over I don't finish one side I do the other side at the same time as well so I'll switch it over and I will hammer this side now also decide which side you want to be the back of the pendant which one the front because obviously this side is going to look much smoother than the side we're going to hammer on unless you actually want that texture so I'm just going to continue And you can see I spend a lot more time hammering in the area that I want to expand than let's say the top because we're going to be attaching some wires here so I want this to remain quite narrow. So just continue until you're happy with the expansion and just remember to be gentle with the hammering. Right, so I've shaped this the way I wanted it to be and if you hammer you'll notice that there are little marks and it's not, um, not very even so when you do the hammer blow sometimes it distorts the frame. So what you can do to even that out, you can either use one of these pads. I buy these off eBay. They're really not expensive. Um, and they're like sandpaper, but with a foam pad behind. They're really useful to have. Um, and you can straighten this out. So you get them in different sizes and different grits. So this one is a very fine one. So you wouldn't want to use it to get rid of the bumps. You use that later for shine. Um, but what you can use, if you do have a Dremel, I buy these sort of rotary uh, sandpaper rolls. Uh, also on eBay, so if you put in rotary sandpaper um, a bit, you will find these as well. And these ones work pretty well. You can see on this side, I've already smoothed it out. You get these in different grits as well. I've put them in the uh, video I've made a couple of weeks ago about polishing and shining your jewelry so you can find that on there um, and this works pretty well also for evening out any uneven hammer sections so it's quite useful you can see i've done this out already all right so you're just going to shine this and then we're going to move on to the next step <clears throat> all right so i'm just going to polish this a little bit um using my my Dremel. Right, so I'm not sure if there, you can see the difference, but using this, um, I think it's about a 3000 grit sandpaper bit, and it gives you a lot more shine polishing these pieces than if you can have a look at the other side, it's still quite scratched and dull. So it makes quite a difference, um, and I really love these because they're great for, for polishing these wire bits. <clears throat> so I've polished it, and uh, the next step is to um, create the bail. So we're going to do is then you're going to decide on which side you want to be the front and which the back um i think i'm going to keep that the front and we're going to spin this forward like so and the next step is to shape the bail i'm going to bend this up a little bit so that the legs kind of line up parallel with the back once we've fully bent it over. I'm going to try and keep the half round wire from pushing downwards by clamping it with the 
pair of pliers here and that's what it looks like so far so we're just going to adjust it to be a little bit straighter and we're going to take these legs and we're going to wrap these around the side of the veil with a thicker wire this can be a little bit fiddly so as i always say take your time with that i'm going to do the same on the other side kind of wrap it around the top and that's why i didn't hammer on the top and kind of close that off a little bit and so far that's what it looks like rather Right, so now I've polished it up and cut the wires off here near the bell. And now we need to attach some wires that will carry the stone. So I've cut a 35 centimeter piece of one mil, which is 18 gauge. And I'm just going to attach it here. So just make sure that you have roughly left the same length of wire on each side. So just kind of work it out so that you have the same length left on, on either side after attaching so take into account the piece of wire that is going to run across the center to carry the stone so i'm just going to attach like so i normally do two wraps you can see try and make the square wire sit nice and flat you can see here that one of the edges is sticking up so you try and avoid that by twisting the wire as you are attaching it so that the flat side grabs onto the frame so it's just because it's got a little bit more grip so i'm just going to attach it like so squeeze it and then we're going to run this across the middle and attach it at the base as well. We're going to be doing the same on the other side with another wire. All right, so I have shaped the square wire and I've attached it on both sides. You can see that I've got about the same length on each side left. So we're going to do next is place the stone and then we're going to use the bottom wires to attach it in place. So for that, we're going to bend this upwards and create a slight bend and then we are going to shape this around the stone so you can let go of the stone and then use your pliers to bend just be careful so that you don't create too many marks and we're just going to bring this around and test the stone and the next step is to attach this wire to the sort of cross member here so we would then bring it around here through that Like so it's a little bit difficult with this bigger wire and then we would just attach it whoops it's a little bit fiddly at this stage because there isn't much to hold the stone in place so once the first sort of section is attached it gets a little bit easier so we then just attach the one side and then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side and then just attach this wire a couple of times around this i'm not going to do this on camera because it's really fiddly um and it won't look it won't be of much use so i'm just going to do the same on the other side and then uh, adjust the wire shape to suit the stone okay so i've attached the wires around a stone and um you can see that these wires from the bottom here kind of wedge the stone in place so i've attached these to the back here and i kind of brought these in a little bit as well so now the stone's nice and secure and then the next step is we're going to use these other wires now to kind of create a little bit of detail so 
I'm going to start shaping this end and I might just do a little bit of hammering so I'm going to bring this across and I'm going to hammer this section here to bring out a little bit of um, detail and we're going to be attaching this wire to the base so to hammer we're just going to lift what, what we've done here just now up a little bit like so and then we are going to bring in our block so obviously it's a bit difficult with the the bottom here so you're going i'm going to have to move these wires i don't want to bend them too much because otherwise you make them brittle and eventually the danger is that they can break so you want to do is you place the wire you want to hammer onto your block let's bend these out a bit and then ever so gently hammer the section you want to flatten out and the way i do it when i hammer i i put the blow towards the wire and then I pull it out towards the direction I want to flatten it out like that bring it up a little bit more like that and you don't need much force with that um, you just need because the copper wire is really soft so you just need to um, have very gentle hammer blows the thing is when you hit the wire too hard it also distorts quite strangely so if you're very gentle with it it's much easier to control the way it distorts occasionally i will turn this back up and i will check that the fit's still okay because obviously when you hammer the wire it kind of distorts the shape and the position of it um, all right so once you've done that we're obviously going to do the same on the other side as well so we're going to recreate a symmetrical shape on the other side so i always recommend when you're recreating symmetrical designs to um to do one stage and then the the same stage on the other side at the same time because that way you have more control over this the symmetry of things all right so i'm going to do this now and then we're going to move on to the next stage all right so i've attached that so the next step is we're going to take the top wires and we're going to create another shape so i think i'm just going to go across kind of attach it here so you could hammer that if you wanted to i'm just going to leave it as is and i'm going to attach it to the side here so with a thicker wire it's always a little bit more tricky let's try and keep it nice and flat like so that i'm going to do, be doing the same on the other side so as i said i always make one side and then i tend to go and move on to the other side and do this uh, do it at the same time just so that i can control the symmetry of it so we're going to be doing the shape on the other side as well okay so i've attached these on on either side so now we're going to create some swirls with the leftover wires See this one it's been a little bit work hardened so it's not bending quite as nicely as i want it to Put it there. i'm just going to be attaching it here We're doing the same on the other side. Okay, so I've finished attaching. Next step, we're going to add in some wire. So I've got a 50 centimeter piece of 1 mil 18 gauge wire. We're going to find a midpoint. And I'm just kind of put a V in that. And what we're going to do is we're going to be attaching it into that little groove on either side of the bale. So this again, a little bit of a fiddly business. So I want to kind of bring this round and pull it 
pull that through like so. Just want to hold that groove up behind the bell and then you can use your tools to kind of help you attach like that and make sure that the wire comes back out here I'll just kind of jiggle that straight just going to pull that and we're going to be doing the same obviously on the other side so we're going to be attaching it in the same manner and then just make sure that the wire comes out in that curve here Right, so I've attached this wire here. You can see I've created a little V and I've attached it on either side, right in the middle of this little arc here. So we're going to take another wire exactly the same sort of dimensions, put it in half, um, and then we're going to feed this through the arc, kind of through like that. And we're going to be attaching it on the outside of the arc on either side. So I'm going to be doing that and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so I've added in some more wire. There's one on this side. You can see if I flip it around, I've kind of moved it across from one side to the other and then attached on either side. So we're going to be using these wires to create a little bit of detail. So I'm going to start off by shaping this one. Maybe bringing it along here so obviously make this a nicer swirl and then we're going to be doing the same with this one and then kind of run them alongside it and maybe just going to be attaching them here um, and obviously we're going to be doing the same on the other side so make sure that this one and this one is symmetrical so you'll be doing them so i'm not sure if i'm going to attach them from over the top or from underneath we'll see um, how we're going to proceed from here so this is the initial shape right so I have created the other side as well symmetrically and I've wrapped these wires twice around the base frame and so that the wires come up from the inside and I'm going to create a bit of an organic design going up and we're going to be attaching these wires around the frame here. So just feed these through. Like so. And you can use pull them one at a time to help you bring them through. Like so. a bit more you just kind of want to line these up side by side and then we're going to be attaching this with one wrap here yeah, we're obviously going to do the same on the other side as symmetrically as we possibly can all right so i've created a symmetrical design on each side so we're going to take these two wires on the right and we're going to make our way up with these and with this one I'm going to create a small swirl so I'm going to bring this in through here pull this through as I said always before with square wire just take your time otherwise it has a tendency to twist I need a different pair of pliers them yet so I'm just going to use this so just keep twisting this using your pliers um, I'm just going to be using these until you're satisfied with the, with the shape like so so we're going to be attaching this wire to the frame as well as this one um, here and then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side all right so i've attached both of these wires at the top so you can either 
use these to create some more detail or cut them off. I haven't actually quite decided what I'm going to do yet. But we're going to move on to the sections at the bottom here. So what I would like to do with those is kind of cover that hole here. And I'm going to create some kind of swirl to actually fit in between. Um, so I am going to switch this over. And like I do with most of my endings when I want to create a tapered sort of look I'm going to squeeze the end like that and as I squeeze I also roll we're going to be hammering this this is probably going to be a bit too long um, just depending how much of the space you want to fill so I'm going to just roll this in actually going to be okay I think so that will then kind of slide over but I want to hammer this a little bit so I'm going to adjust it until I'm happy with the shape so just kind of bring this in a little bit like so and before I actually roll it over I'm going to hammer it so I'm going to flip it over and use this section here to hammer it because um, that is going to be brought up. We're going to be rolling this in. So I want to hide the dents. Unless you want the actual texture, you can just um, hammer from the front. So I'm just going to place this. And as I've done before, I will just hammer into the direction I want the um the swirl to expand to i'm just going to adjust this a little bit more and then um, i'm going to come back once i've hammered this so i've hammered out the swirl um, and i decided to actually i'm going to just fold that up rather than roll it up um so i've hammered from the front so I have made a video recently about how to polish and remove marks from your wires. So I'm briefly going to touch on to that, but I'll also put a link below in um, in the video description to show you how to, to do this. So I use these radial brushes. They come in different grits um, to remove any marks and bumps. Um, and then obviously at last I'm going to use some polishing rouge to get the final shine. Um, so once you're happy and satisfied with the, the shape, you can also use some, um, I've got a round file here, you can use these to actually get the round section inside here nice and smooth as well. And you can obviously um, file the edges to make it nice and smooth. So once you're happy with that, we're just going to fold this up like so and kind of place it in the design here like so now obviously we're going to adjust this a little bit more and um, as i always recommend doing the other side at the same time so that you have um, the same shape and same dimensions so that's that and obviously give it a bit more of a polish just now all right so once we have folded this in we can then go ahead and trim these wires off um, you can Obviously, do something with these if you want to, but I thought we're just going to trim them off. Excuse the plaster, me being me, I did manage to nip myself while trimming the first one off. That's why you only see one. Uh, but never mind. So I'm going to fold this in and I'm going to trim it off somewhere close to the edge so that I can then just use a pair of pliers to kind of tuck it. And you don't really want the, the wire ends to. Um, get stuck in your clothing or scratch your skin or so so you tend to fold them in we do the same on the other side as well and then the next step is to if you're going to oxidize your piece is do oxidize it now polish it and then the last step is to add the beads all right so i've oxidized my piece and i've polished it up and um, as i said earlier i have made a tutorial on how to do the polishing already so you can take a look at that i said i'll pop a link in the description below so i'm using some 
0.6 millimeter wire to add the beads to um, you can use 0.4 but 0.6 is stronger and it will hold better because the 0.4 has a tendency to to break and uh, so the 0.6 which is your 22 gauge is what i'm using here so i'm trying to line them up as best as i can and i kind of use the groove here for instance you don't have to do that but i kind of use the groove here to kind of slot them into place to keep these little beads um, lined up you can see on that side it's kind of slotted into place as well so you kind of push it down until obviously they line up and then attach obviously the the wire anywhere you can find it and obviously tuck it away um, nicely so that when you cut the wire the inside is poking up on the inside basically and the last step is to add the stone which is one of my favorite things to do is the accent stones um, and I can get it here so this is a 0.8 millimeter stone for this I have used normally for a stone that size I use you I use 0.8 millimeter wire which is 20 gauge I've used 0.6 purposefully because I want to use I want to keep the setting quite small and um, and thin because it has to fit into this space so I've made more prongs to give it more structure um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the legs through where I want it to go like so and then I'm just going to push it into place and as with the bead wire I'm just going to attach these find a space anywhere attach these um, and tie it off and that should be secure and that is the whole pendant done so obviously trim off all the wires make sure they're tucked away um, and that's it so thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because i upload new stuff on a regular basis if you end up making this pendant and want to show it off feel free to join our um, artist community on facebook which is called wire wrappers and metalsmiths worldwide um, and lastly, obviously, I've got uh, social media, I've got TikTok, Instagram, obviously the YouTube. So everything is under Embali Crafts. Um, and also, if you feel like any materials, I've got gemstones, kits, PDF tutorials, all sorts of goodies on my website. And I will pop a link below. And um, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching.